I made one giant mistake with stock photography and it's reduced my total earnings, which is really silly of me, as it would only take a small amount of effort to boost my earnings. I have photos and a couple of videos on Shutterstock and Adobe Stock and that's it. But I should be on all of these as well, or at least a good chunk of them and so should you. There are some exclusivity policies, but you aren't forced into them on any of these platforms. Spreading your portfolio across multiple platforms gives you a degree of diversity in your income streams, helping you become more robust to earning structure alterations and changes in where people go to get their stock images. If you're anything like me, then you're probably thinking about all of the extra admin involved and all the extra forms that need filling in. And I get that, I do. But casting a bigger net with more sites exposes you to more paying customers. I see that to outweigh the extra admin burden. But if that alone hasn't convinced you, then there are tools like FileZilla, which can help speed up the process. So let's have a look at what earnings could look like from information that I've tried to track down across the internet. Shutterstock often seems to be the front runner, where for some it can account for between 20 to 45% of their total stock earnings. Then comes Adobe Stock of around 16 to 20%. For my lifetime earnings on both of these platforms, 51% of my earnings have come from Shutterstock and 49% from Adobe Stock. Considering that these are the only two platforms that I use, the numbers other people claim seem to be about right. Next is the third in what some have dubbed as the big three, and that is with iStock, some claiming 15% of their earnings coming from here. Then there's deposit photos for between three and 11%, 123RF for three to 4%, Dreamstime for two to 3%, Alley for two and a half percent, Pond5 for between 0.5 and 2%, Count stock photo for one to two and a half percent and big stock photo for about one percent. Now this is very rough with limited evidence to support it, something I intend to address, but it hopefully paints a picture for what things could look like. If I scale my numbers with these earnings, I could have earned hundreds more than I have done. What really appeals about contributing to multiple platforms is the added security you get with your earnings. Let's say for a minute that you were on one platform that was exclusive, say iStock, which is one platform you could use to exclusively host your portfolio and get some form of advantage from. 100% of your earnings come from that one source. Imagine if some form of change happens, could be small or something very disruptive. It could drastically slash your earnings in one go. Just one thing. You're in control of barely anything that could topple your earnings. Consider instead you're on two non-exclusive platforms, say Shutterstock and Adobe Stock, two healthy earners. But if change happens to one of them, causing earnings to crumble, there might be some impact on the other income stream, but there's a chance that the other won't crumble if they are separate companies. By having two income streams, only a portion of your income will be affected rather than 100% of your income. But we can improve this even further. Imagine you spread your portfolio across numerous platforms. The stacks may be smaller, but these may equate to a similar stack size as the first two. When change happens to the big contributors, you are in a more stable position where an even smaller proportion of your earnings are affected. An overview of the platforms I've looked at looks like this, with just three platforms offering exclusivity incentives, but all allow non-exclusive submissions. It's also worth noting the variation in minimum payouts particularly with the lower earning platforms where it might take longer to get your first payout when you're just starting out. Also consider that some platforms might prefer various types of submissions. My best sellers are of computer aided engineering illustrations, which might not be what every platform wants. It's worth considering what sort of photos each platform might want and see whether that fits your portfolio. I'm gonna sign up to a number of these other stock photography websites and see how much I can earn and give you an update when I get a clear picture of what that looks like. In the meantime, if you wanna find out much you could earn on Shutterstock, then click here. If you wanna find out much you can earn on Adobe Stock, then click here.